Cooper. Hello, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it, you listen. To celebrate the 100th episode of Fanfic Critic, you want to know what I'm going to do? I'm going to review a fanfic. Are you guys shocked? I'm certainly not. Well, I decided to review a Rocky Horror Picture Show fanfic today. I know I reviewed one in the past, but it was a crossover between Beavis and Butthead. So the fanfic I'm reviewing today is a crossover between Charlie the Unicorn. So this will be pretty interesting. The fanfic is called Brad the Earthling by Lyrical Salu... What? Solio... Solio Kwai? I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so it's rated K. It's in English. It has one review, and it was published not that long ago. So, let's get started. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to do voice acting. Please bear with me if I don't sound perfect. And don't worry, there's no singing in this fanfic, so you don't have to worry about me breaking all the mirrors in your house when I start to sing. So, let's take a look. <clears throat> Earthling. Riff Raff growled into Brad's blue-tinted bedroom. He winced as Magenta elbowed him sharply in the side and turned his head to glare at her. Uh, Brad, he amended, clenching his hands into fists. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Magenta smirk and roll her eyes. Oh, get out of my way, Magenta said, pushing past her brother into their master's visitor's room. Wake up, Magenta bellowed, throwing open the curtains on Brad's bed. What? What is it? Brad mumbled, struggling upright and reaching around for his glasses. Is the house on fire? He added stupidly. Magenta and Riff Raff exchanged a puzzled glance. No, Magenta answered after a moment's pause. The master has requested your presence in the lab. Yes, the lab, Riff Raff echoed, irritated. Now get up, if you know what's good for you. He leveled his pale, empty eyes at the newcomer in his most menacing stare. To his satisfaction, Brad flinched back against the pillows. I... I don't... Brad stuttered, blinking rapidly. I think I want to go back to sleep. He trailed off. Rick Raft and his sister once again shared a look, and Magenta stepped forward to take Brad's arm while Rick Raft, in his cold, distant voice, murmured, No, you must come with us to the master's lab. He took hold of Brad's other arm as Magenta towed him forward. Besides, said Magenta silkily, Janet will be there, most certainly. Riff Raff raised one eyebrow at her over Brad's head, and she winked at him subtly. His thin lips curved into a malicious grin. Oh, yes, Riff Raff said, and all sorts of other treats as well. Brad's forehead wrinkled. But after a moment of thought, he shook himself away from the sibling's grasp and said, There's no need to hold on to me. I can follow quite easily myself, thanks. He tried to glare at them, but the effect was somewhat lessened when Magenta gave him a cursory look over from head to toe, and Brad remembered that he still wore only his underwear. 
He flushed, and both Riffraff and Magenta stifled their mocking laughter with difficulty. Come, Riffraff said, recovering almost immediately. He moved to open the he moved to open the doorway and motioned first his sister and then his cha charge through before shutting it tightly behind them. A ghost of a smile playing on his face the whole time. Magenta took the lead, guiding the way through the ancient creaking castle, occasionally checking over her shoulder to see if Brad was still following. The man looked nervous, constantly readjusting with his glasses and jumping at every noise. Magenta smirked at her brother behind Brad's back, but as she turned back, their visitor let out an alarm squeak. Ahead of the trio in the narrow hallway, a figure crouched on the fraying rug, dripping red, wet. Yeah, wet. With a dismayed sigh, both Magenta and Riff Raff sprang to the aid of their beloved master's newest creation. Rocky, Magenta exclaimed, how did you escape the master's bedchamber? Rocky peered up into her face, but didn't respond. Instead, he let out a low, frightened moan and blinked a drop of rainwater from his eyes. Riffraff, standing over both of them, nudged Magenta and shrugged, indicating Brad, who lurked awkwardly in the hall behind them, with a twist, with a twitch of his head. We can't afford to waste any more time, Magenta, he whispered. The master will already be displeased that we have taken as long as we have with this one. Magenta nodded and rose to her feet, leaving Rocky to cower on the floor. Yes, we'll return later to deal with him, she said, looking down her nose with disgust at her master's pet. The group set off down the castle's twisting corridors and vaulted rooms again, leaving the frightened Rocky fr far behind. Finally, they arrived back in the chamber in which Brad had first encountered them mere hours before. Magenta walked briskly across the room to the lift, whose metal doors stood open and ready to receive them. Are, are you sure we should go on that thing? Brad stammered, speaking for the first time since Riff Raft and Magenta had collected him from his room. Oh, come now, Brad. Magenta chuckled, though she sounded faintly annoyed. It's perfectly safe, I promise you. Brad looked mistrustfully. Mistrustfully? That might be an actual word, but I think you want to use the word distrustfully because that would make more sense than mistrustfully. Brad looked distrustfully at the old cord st supporting the lift, but stumbled onto it anyway when Riff Raff lost his patience and pushed him forward. Brad opened his mouth to complain, but clearly thought better of it, and Magenta sneered at her brother behind Brad's back as she pushed the button that brought the elevator grinding into action. Within a few moments, the door opened again onto the garish, salmon-colored walls of Dr. Frankenfurter. <sighs> okay, they did spell Frankenfurter right, but they forgot to capitalize the N and the F in Frankenfurter. You know how it's like a dash, dash, dash? So, um, you need to make sure that you spell the names right. I mean, it even shows his name on the DVD, and it shows how it's spelt. Yeesh. Of Dr. Frankenfurter's laboratory, it was completely empty. Brad baked, balked angrily as Riff Raff tried to force him out of the lift and wheeled to his face guards. What? Brad balked angrily as Riff Raff tried to force him out of the lift and wheeled to face his guards. I guess it's supposed to be Brad is turning around to face his guards? I don't know. Eh, you should probably reword that. You told me that Janet would be here, he shouted indignantly, attempting to keep the panic out of his voice. Well, I don't see her anywhere. Before Magenta, before either Magenta or Riff Raff could offer an explanation, Columbia, Frank's other servant, appeared suddenly at the top of the wide curved ramp that hugged the side of the room, flanked by four Transylvanian visitors. Oh! Columbia squeaked, squealed. You're here! She turned to her right and muttered something to one of the Transylvanians who raced away immediately. Frank will be delighted, she added. You're really very lucky to be invited up here again, and I know I'm mangling her voice, so shut up. 
Brad scowled at her, his anger burning away any misgivings he had, and was about to give all three of them a piece of his mind before he was interrupted by the reappearance of the Transylvanian. Oh, good, Columbia said. She signaled to Riff Raff and Magenta, who stepped forward and took Brad's arms. Hey, what's the big idea here? Brad protested as the siblings began to drag him towards the dark opening in the wall where the deep freeze chamber had once been. Oh, don't worry, purred Magenta, grinning at him. We're only taking you to Janet. Brad felt himself relax before his intuition kicked in. Wait just a second, he called, before Magenta and her brother paused at the door to the dark room and threw him inside. Goodbye, Brad. Magenta and Riff Raff said together, laughing and beginning to close the heavy door. Goodbye, Columbia echoed from across the larger room, giggling. Goodbye? What? Brad asked, thoroughly confused. Then pitch blackness fell, and Brad felt a sharp pain in his head before he slumped to the floor, unconscious. Brad woke later in a room he didn't recognize with a splitting headache and a burning pain in his side. What happened? He groaned aloud, holding his head with one hand. He opened his eyes and looked down at his side. Damn it, he swore. They took my freaking kidney. And that's how it ended? This is pretty much... This isn't a crossover with Charlie the Unicorn. This is... This is pretty much Charlie the Unicorn except with the Rocky Horror characters. That's not a crossover! If you're having a crossover, it would be characters from one verse and characters from another verse actually interacting with each other. And we do not have any of the Charlie and the other unicorns show up in this at all. This was stupid. This was a waste of time and stupid. The only good thing about it is that it was, you know, well written and the paragraph spacing was good. But other than that, the story itself was kind of stupid. It should have been called a crossover. Maybe that's what's pissing me off about it. Huh. Well, uh, this has been kind of a lackluster episode. <sighs> well, I'm the fanfic critic. Fanfic I'm the critic. Fanfic critic. Come to the Big Rock Candy Mountain, fanfic critic. Who the hell are you? Get away from me. Get the hell away Come from on. me. I Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who the bloody hell are you? What are you doing to my friend? I am the great corn Oreo. I must have TP. Do you have TP, Susan? What? Help. Don't worry. I'll take care of this bugger. Now, you better tell me why you're here. Because if you don't, I will come over there and personally kill you. I time warp! I time warp for TP! I time warp for TP! <laughs> you must give me TP! TP for bang more! <laughs> 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 It's astounding. Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen closely. Not for very much longer. I've got to keep control. Just a jump to your left. Put your hands on your hips. Just a jump to your left. Put your hands on your hips.
what the bloody hell just happened? Oh boy. Michael Randy was ill the day the earth stood still, but he told us where we stand. And Flash Gordon was there in silver underwear. Claude Rains was the invisible man. Then something went wrong for Fay Ray and King Kong. They got caught in a cellular jam. Then at a deadly pace, it came from outer space. And this is how the message ran. Picture show in the back row. Oh, 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 oh. To the late night double feature picture show. 